So welcome to the uh, last session before lunch. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Jasmine, who is uh, a lab designer, who will be talking about making space. Welcome. Thank you. So first I wanted to ask you if you could um, just say like one word or one sentence about your role of being here. Like if you want to go to the next space. Microphone. Oh, sorry. Did you hear what I said? Is that okay? Because I want to do the essay class. It's just for me to get a view of the room. Do you want to start? Uh, sure, I'm trying to start a small hacking space by uh, myself. Okay. Here in Sweden? Government? Yes. No, no. Uh, in Malmö. Malmö, okay. No okay. help. Helping you. Okay. Well, I always wanted to have a hacker space for the room, but there is not. So I have to make myself some time. Okay. Where do you live? Uh, Oros now. What? Oros. Oros, oh, okay. That's a... It's about an hour or more. Mm. We have uh, we arranged on some hackathons and stuff in Uppsala, so I thought okay. I wanted to hear about the uh, next piece. Yeah. Uh, Carl Gustafsson, I'm an ASIC designer and been using Linux for like 20 years. Education is a, 
something I work a lot with to bring the hacker makerspace mentality into to the school system because uh, it's not really working today. If you have different cognitive skills, you're often excluded from, from the uh, uh, ordinary uh, standardized system. So in the makerspace I'm building here in Gothenburg, uh, there are kids coming in and just they find their way directly to they find their Raspberry Pi and just start building stuff. You don't even have to, to say anything. Kids can do that by, them, by themselves. And that's what you need to foster in, in the educational system as well. Because teachers are only there to kind of uh, add a piece of the puzzles that, that are missing, not, not to teach, um, more, more to listen. Uh, yeah, and games for learning, that's something we need to bring into the system more. And that's also for every organization, not just school systems. Uh, this takes us back to the storytelling I was talking about. This is um, from Nordic mythology. It's called Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life. And this is a non-linear story world that our brains are very non-linear. Um, but the Greek drama system kind of changed everything into a three-part uh, storytelling structure that is very linear and not really adapted to, to the way our minds work. And uh, a proof of that is that this story world is so immersed and strong that we can see it in World of Warcraft. If you've seen Lord of the Rings, it's the exact same story world that has lived through transformation through uh, uh, different societies. So that, that's the power of, of storytelling and, and immersive story worlds. Um, those are my <laughs> some of my favorite game characters from my childhood. Um, and I, yeah, as I, there are some new people here. So I'm talking about how to use uh, game mechanic and storytelling when you design spaces for people to be uh, play-centric and human-centered uh, design principles. Mm -hmm. um, so DIY is also part of um, my philosophy that is connected to everything. It's um, also, I, I say it's a very natural part of our way to to uh, understand our surrounding, to, to um, to hang around with other people, and um, it's, it's a mentality more. Uh, I, it, the, the, are you familiar with DIY? Um, yeah. So it's, a, it's from the 50s. I mean, it's been a lot, the, the theme has been a lot for a long time. Yeah. And within the DIY philosophy, and the hacker mentality is, is very close, and um, we also talk a lot about new currencies and ways of sharing. So Creative Commons, um, uh, alternative economies and currencies, that's also very something we discuss a lot. So in the makerspace I'm building, um, we're also um, talking about merging economies. So if you have a membership fee and there is someone who can't pay that with monetary capital, you should be able to pay that with knowledge capital or, or skill. And that is something else I'm also working on to kind of merge and find new economical systems. And that is really hard when you want to get a bank account or when you need an organization number, when you need to send the papers into the tax office and you try to explain this, or if you try to do a budget where, where a big part of the capital is social capital uh, or knowledge capital. So it's really complicated within our societal structures to, to actually design those spaces. Um, so uh, that's something to keep in mind for, for the people who are just starting. Um, Making and playing are uh, also part of our natural life. Um, games that are, it's a way of playing and learning. And, and basically it's also a way for us to understand our um, environment and also to share our experience with other people. It's a way for us to communicate and understand each other. Uh, th those are brain cells. I always talk about synapses, how those, how hacker and maker spaces uh, indirectly create a very good environment to create cross-pollination of ideas and um, um, synops are you all familiar with the term or synergies? It's when different perspectives meet and something innovation happens because innovation often happens when different perspectives, when different ages kind of cross. Then, then you have a, a lot of knowledge sharing and uh, cool things are happening. In, um, in the makerspace I'm building, there are a lot of entrepreneurs because um, we also have uh, business models where we try to support startups. So it's, it's not, um, I mean, a lot of makerspaces are more like places where we hang around after school or after work. Uh, but the one here in Gothenburg, which is called Collaboratory, is also uh, about supporting entrepreneurs and uh, people who want to find alternative ways to sustain 
uh, with the creating jobs and so on. And um, yeah, that's also a bit complicated, especially here in Sweden when entrepreneurs are excluded from the societal um, um, support systems. Like when you don't have a paid job, you are not allowed to uh, get this uh, ARCA stuff. It's called unemployment uh, support and so on. If you have a company, you are excluded from everything like that. So it's, um, I say that being an entrepreneur is like being shot up to space and you have to build your rocket on the way up. And then you kind of have to fight to find fuel to be able to land again. So uh, you, you need to have some guts to, to actually kick off. And it's the same thing when you start a bigger space. I mean, you have to fund the, the location and so on. So, so it takes some guts to, to work with it. Uh, this is one of my favorite um, um, scientists. He was very transdisciplinary. And that's also when we talk about cross-pollination of ideas. Uh, it's, I think it's important to um, to have a very a varied background. So I studied everything from archaeology to film and directing, so and to neuroscience and dancing with fire. Like everything, it kind of uh, merges everything, and you get a bigger knowledge of people. I think so. It's good to to have different perspectives, and uh, yeah, you never change things by fighting the existing reality to change something build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And that's like the best quote, I think, by Bucky, Buckminster Fuller. Uh, he designed uh, a lot of um, structures and um, at the dome, you see in the background, the uh, geodesic dome. And that's, uh, that's also a philosophy that I connect very much with the uh, background maker philosophies and the other philosophies. And Bucky looked into um, patterns in nature a lot. Um, those hexagons, they, the way they connect makes uh, them be able to stand, they can be 30, 40 or even more meters high and they, they can be very thin and they can stand like that because they are supporting each other. It's, so it's like a piece of puzzle. And uh, so this image is where I connect to the knowledge sharing and be sharing resources because that's also what you do in those spaces is um, that pe people can bring their tools, their machines, and if you share them, you don't have to buy. You don't have to buy two, three D printers. You can buy one, and you can share it. And uh, or even you can build your own. So uh, sh the sharing economy, the economics. Um, I'm sure you, most of you are familiar with those terms. And this illustrates the cross pollination of ideas um, that I talked about. Uh, and there is a new, um, a lot of new technologies and. Um, easier, like the Raspberry we mentioned before, it, everything is becoming more accessible. Uh, this is um, the structure of graphene, which isn't really new, but it's, it's becoming new in the um, uh, public sphere soon. So this is like a nanomaterial non that is, um, also needs electricity. And this will give, uh, be able to give us flexible screens um, in the near future, I hope. Uh, but it can also be very, very thin main membranes that um, um, extract salt from salt water. So you could actually get sweet water from salt water through a membrane. So that's kind of really, that could solve a lot of problems in the world. <laughs> so we have this, uh, all, it's interesting with these new things coming up. And, uh, and doing workshops in hackerspaces and makerspaces around those um, uh, kind of innovations make, makes, uh, we can create products like those membranes, um, to actually solve uh, uh, big issues too. Um, and that's something I try to also promote in the makerspace to, do, to, have, to have prototyping labs, because prototyping is a very important part to, to play test and iterate. And when uh, I, I talk about the four Ps, um, when you work with people, when you design an organization or any space, space is to to find uh, the purpose. I mean, why, why, is, why do people want to join this space? And how can you, you have to kind of define your own purpose first, and then you try to find a shared purpose with, uh, with the members. So you find the purpose, and then you find the passion, because um, passion is what drives you. It's rarely money that drives people to, to um, kind of put in their time uh, in those uh, spaces. And then the pleasure to have fun, to, to gain something out of it, and people, people to share, to share with, and uh, to
to talk, talk with and work with. But I also have the private space. So, so when you design the space in itself, it, it's good to have spaces where people can also be by themselves. So it's very accessible and inviting for everyone, but still have an open design so you can choose where, where, what kind of feeling you have for that thing. Uh, and we've been, I mean, ecosystems are really overused today in all discussions, but I still talk about ecosystems. And um, if you merge all those, uh, the game mechanics, the hacker mentality, uh, various cognitive skills, you get all the, and those are, um, let's make the synapses, the neurons kind of make everything happen. And uh, to do this, I also talk a lot about the Cogwheel philosophy. Uh, and the Cogwheel philosophy is something, uh, um, it, for it's um, like you have Cogwheels, it, they're very transformable. So you can take everything apart and put everything together into a machine, uh, depending on what's going on around you. So you are very adaptable. And I think ev every organization, every space needs to have this um, transformable uh, design. So you kind of adapt to what's new technology was going around uh, on around the world and you can take everything apart put everything together again and um, and get this machine going and also where every cogwheel is important so every, every member every person has something to add to, to the system uh, and then uh, we need to bring the basement and attic uh, philosophy into uh, our living rooms uh, for the new people, the first slide was kind of about me hanging around in the basement a lot when I was a kid. And the basement in that is where you can always find, find the material and stuff to, to play with. Uh, and that's why I kind of try to want to bring into to our living rooms. So, um, uh, where, are, where are my time wise? I don't keep track of time. And, uh, you still got uh, 12 or maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, when I so I'm designing the collaboratory in Gothenburg, and it's at Lindholmen, and everyone is welcome to visit whenever you want. Nate. And when I started designing this, I studied different hackerspaces around the world. So when I travel in, in I'm a filmmaker too, so I travel a bit and visiting. Um, Warsaw Hackerspace, for example. And, uh, has anyone been to Warsaw Hackerspace? And then I went to um, Helsinki a couple of months ago. And for, for the people who are um, building Hackerspace now, uh, Helsinki Hackerspace had some really good advice on how to structure like the really practical stuff. Because people always need stuff around. And um, I think this in Helsinki this was like the most the cleanest space I've ever been to, because usually there are a lot of um, um, things everywhere. When you have a hack space, you have stuff lying around everywhere, and a lot of people leave things for weeks. So um, they had a system where all the boxes are kind of marked, and uh, people could buy a box, and you could have your stuff there. And if you left your stuff um, in the common areas, and they had another system where uh, they put the stuff on a shelf like this so after one week they put it here after two weeks here three weeks here fourth week they took the box and they kind of uh, gave away everything they had like an open day auction where they gave away stuff so <laughs> that's, uh, that's a very good system because it is a problem you would, when you build a like space you're going to know this, this problem <laughs> so it, it's good to to talk with other spaces and see how they solve their issues. I also talked a lot with them about member fees and so on. And they had different member fees depending on how often you wanted to use the space. So um, there are different systems. And uh, here in Gothenburg, for, for the new people, I'm trying to have a mixed economy where you can also uh, pay with your skills or knowledge, not just monetary system. And that can be a bit complicated. If you're interested in some of, some of the designing with methodologies and uh, DIY method, uh, methods, I am um, I've published four books called Learn to Share. You can scan 
in fact, or just go into learntoshare.net and uh, it's Creative Commons so you can uh, remix, share, use it in, if you're a teacher, take it to school. Um, and uh, this book is connected to um, a DOI Days event. DOI Days is a lab that I'm uh, producing in Gothenburg. And the next DIY days will be 18th and 19th of January. And if you have stuff you want to play test or show, anyone is welcome to just grab a table and uh, present your things. And you can just contact me if you want to know more about that. Uh, so, but the the books are um, they're a very good resource. I can show you some pages. So here are methods for uh, like designing labs. And here is the, this uh, exhibition or maker, maker studio that I'm calling it. So this is how you can just bring your stuff, put it up during two days and uh, meet people. And uh, you can also build new, new things, you don't have to have a ready project. Um, and, and test it, because when, when you have a couple of hundred people going around trying new stuff, you'll see it with new eyes. So it's a very, very, very good way of uh, iterating and, and playtesting your ideas. So everyone is welcome to, to join that in January next year, and it's going to be in Gothenburg, and then we have a hackathon at the collaboratory. So uh, what I want to do with the award is, is uh, the award is, is very connected to social innovation. So it's, uh, it's hacking, making uh, game, game mechanics, storytelling, to work with social issues. And we do have rapid prototyping sessions. And um, what I want to do after that is to bring the prototypes that people come up with into the hackathon in the makerspace. And then give people um, four or five days to have a game jam and hackathon to actually start building on those prototypes and to be able to implement them afterwards. And then the, the makerspace will support a couple of projects, so it, it will be like a contest, contest, and we will find the support systems to actually implement those ideas. And that's a very, very good way to, to design a process where you curate all the results. Because often when you go to a conference uh, like this, we talk, you get a lot of ideas, then you go home and nothing happens, you get into your daily life. So if you have the hackathon, um, uh, message right afterwards and bring all those ideas in there, you actually start doing something for real and, and you can get something more sustainable. And so that's what I that's how I design my labs. And so how many are you of you live in Gothenburg? Okay, so if you need a space to be this is the laboratory. And everyone who's does not live in Gothenburg, if you need a space to work when you're here, just you're welcome. Um, we're just building it, so we're still uh, we're not funded yet. It's really hard to get funding. So it's basically myself and the Gothenburg Film Studios and Interactive Institute to kind of put our time and um, and money into this space. So it's been open. It's been really DIY. We the Gothenburg Film Studios who who rent the floor kind of just said let's just go for it and try. So I've been kind of doing the painting and fixing. And all of this, uh, the entire space, it's like 700 square meters. It was full with, um, uh, it was a lager, how do you say lager? St storage for um, um, light, like film, big film light. So it was full of stuff. So we had to move everything away during the summer, paint all the walls and everything. Um, so it's still, it's still in the making. So we don't have all the fancy machines and stuff yet. Um, Interactive Institute has, has a lot of good hack stuff there. So um, it's a cool space and it's it's really in the making, so it's a good case study to learn from. Uh, and also Mama people I'm, I'm guessing you're connected to Poshkin. Uh, is it is, are you building like a new space from that community or no? not really. Mm. More parallel. Yeah? Okay. because um, it, uh, it's also interesting to connect. So uh, we're trying to co also connect globally. 
and um, and share knowledge within uh, between Maker and NX spaces. That's uh, everything I want to say. No wonder if you have questions. Is there something you want to discuss based on this? Yeah. Practical question. Um, so this space, we are yes. living in Gothenburg. Uh, how do we find you? How do we find you? We are in Holmen, Holmen Okay. Um, actually, do you have a whiteboard? No. Crayons. Because um, in the in the bot under the floor there is um, a light and camera equipment uh, yeah. rentals, so there are always people people there. Yeah. <laughs> so you just ask them to to unlock the door. You. So you can always go in there. And uh, we we do have workshops and and the indie fika and stuff. And then it's also open in the evenings. And then usually I just go there. So you can call me and I can um, work from there and have the doors open. We are working on a passier system, so we can get in there easier. So when you when you become a member, you get this little key thing, um, and it's going to be connected to the website, so you can see who's there and everything. But that's when we have some more uh, time and funding, because it takes a lot of time to build this structure, and when you don't have support, it it takes even more time. Yeah. So uh, I don't understand very well uh, this uh, hacker spaces, but uh, my impression is that uh, people there gather for having uh, their hobby or something like this. I mean, I've been the one, uh, the one in Copenhagen. But I, my question would be, could uh, me from the research from the university, for example, go there and uh, pay them to do some project that I'm thinking of? So to in, uh, to build this uh, small robot that I want somehow, so in is, is there a way spaces, to, to pay the people there somehow, to go and ask In, them in collaboratory, yes, because uh, collaboratory is a mix of uh, different uh, models. But in a normal, hack, um, like the most hackerspace I've been to, it's more for, uh, for hanging around and um, having discussions. You don't really have the business uh, goal, good. but you could ask people and they could do it anyway. Um, so, so just talk to people, I guess. But in the collaboratory, you could we we aim to actually create um, products and services to get, as a way to get money into the space. Yeah, because I'm thinking that those people they are skilled in uh, making this uh, quick prototypes, as you, mm -hmm. as you yeah. said. And uh, me in the research, I would also be interested only in a quick prototype just to show off my idea. Yeah. I'm not the one that can make this quick prototype. Mm. Yeah, a lot of artists also uh, have that, that uh, uh, want that service. Mm. So in, in, in here, um, we actually have so many interaction designers and hackers that we actually want to have that as a part of the a business model for the space. And uh, the also difference with this space and many other hack spaces is that we already are connected to uh, university, industry, and uh, freelancers, uh, startups. So, so it's it's a bit different than than the ordinary hack space. But I think more hack spaces might um, start thinking this way just to sustain easier. So um, I think it will be. So where, where do you, where are you situated? In Oslo. Oslo. In Oslo, uh, yeah, there is a maker space at the, the university there. Yes, um, and that is for the students. That yeah, I it's only for the students. Okay. There is also another one uh, uh, that, that I know, but that is more for hanging around. Mm. Yeah, I am starting a collaboration with the one at the university, so 
I should say this to him, but maybe we'll work on it. Yeah, yeah, I think you were first. Uh, yeah, I, I just had a comment to the, to, to the question that for, for at least for the few of us starting where I am, mm -hmm. uh, it's first and foremost a social area for, for us to do projects uh, because we already do a lot of projects on our private time mm -hmm. at home. Uh, but it's, so first it will be a social area where we can talk about the projects and, and get some help doing them. But, but then after a while, it'll, I, at least I want to do more, more outreach and teaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily teaching like in school. But. In the Warsaw hackerspace, uh, the people there actually teach um, Linux at the university. So they go to the university and every, I think it's every Tuesday or something, um, the students can go there and get help with their homework and stuff. And they do it like totally free. So and also as a way to get op, uh, open source and free software into the school system. So so um, education becomes cheaper and more accessible in poor areas. So that's a very nice thing of the to do. And something else? Uh, you already said that you it was hard to get funding for these kind mm -hmm. of things, but what kind of response have you gotten from the from the city, or uh, have you had discussions with the Norman Science Park? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they they are claiming to want to build something like this, but on a more corporate level, like uh, support innovation or something mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, it's the same basic idea, but on a smaller scale, this hackerspace. So, what kind of response have you gotten from them and the city? Uh, are they, they were, supportive and um, like want to give you money but can't or are they like... They are slow. There are several sort of problems because I've, I've been working on this for like a couple of years really getting into understanding the, the funding systems of the city and the region and uh, there is a problem with the language because the people who are the policy makers have never heard about DIY. They don't have any clue of what we're talking about. It's like being an alien when you talk to politicians. And I've actually been, I've been in the European Council um, and talked to, about transparency and archi communication architectures in the political machines. And they want to learn, but it's so big to change something in this big political machine. So it's hard for them to keep up with what's going on around the world. And, and uh, locally here in, in uh, Gothenburg, I actually managed to affect uh, like the culture world, so next year they are um, changing their definition of art and culture, so it's going to be broader. Because uh, I talk a lot about transdisciplinary, and I, of, I often, because I'm both from the art and tech scene, studied both at Chalmers and art school, and that's a problem because then I get stuck in the middle where all the cultural funds they say no, you should go to IT, but I never studied IT. I studied game design. <laughs> that, that games are art. I, I don't do IT. So, and, and then the, the like Vinova and, and uh, stuff like that say, but you're, you're an artist, you have to apply for the culture. So there, there I am in the middle. And as always, we get back to the social capital, knowledge capital. So when I, when I produced DIY days, we actually got some support from the region because I managed to find that one person who actually understands what I'm talking about. So you have to find that one person because there is one in every organization. There is one who knows. Or, or at least is curious about it. Mm -hmm. so, so you really have to talk, I mean, I've been in, I don't remember when I had a vacation the last time, because I've been in meetings and going around and just talking, spreading this book. I sent it to uh, hundreds of politicians, policymakers, um, but they still have a hard time kind of understanding it. But it is happening, and um, yeah, for the OIDs uh, that I mentioned, we got 400,000 uh, Swedish crowns from the region, the, when I counted the budget afterwards, uh, the event actually cost 1.2 million. So everything from 400 to 1.2 million, million was my uh, social capital and, and my connections. Like we had speakers from all around the world coming in, top game, game designers and so on. Um, so that's also the value of social capital if you compare it to numbers. It's, uh, when we talk about organizations, I talk a lot about uh, aiming for value, not profit, because value is, is uh, and it will also give you a higher profit if you, if you think on the long term. So it's also, you have to think in the long term all the time, even when you're in the starting point of 
starting this place, it's good to think forward. So uh, I think that answers your questions. A lot of things are happening. It's also the makerspace. Uh, Makerspace as a term is very in a hype now. Like all libraries in Sweden, or many of them, are trying to, they want to build a makerspace in every library. And that's, that's a really good uh, thing, process that has been starting. Uh, so, so it is, uh, I, I just got an extra job, luckily, because I was so close to getting homeless uh, this summer when I was working on this all the time. Um, so I got an extra job on, through the cultural uh, system. Um, here in Gothenburg, and they wanted me to, to uh, renew their organization and actually build a major space um, in there. So, so they are kind of reaching out, but still you get, it's, when you get into actually seeing how those organizations work, it's, it's really scary. It's slow, people waste a lot of time. It's um, a comparison, culture in the West. Uh, culture in the West is like a tax-funded uh, consultancy thing here. They are supposed to support all the uh, artists, everything, game, film, everything in Gothenburg. They got 80 million crowns, 80 million for one year, 2012. And that, that pays the, the salaries for 140 consultants that never held a camera in their hand. And they are supposed to, to consult <laughs> filmmakers and so on. I mean, 80 million crowns, that's 80 years of rent for this uh, for this laboratory, and we don't get support. That that's how it works. So it's it's really scary, um, but I'm hoping that <laughs> that will change very soon. Oh. I think you had a question. No, no, that was earlier. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, eighty million is very little actually. It cost one hundred and ten uh, million uh, to build ten kilometers of bicycle lane. So I don't reach it with my uh, office from the home. So 80 million, I would say, is very little compared Com to the compared budget. Compared to zero, <laughs> that we get. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the budgets that are being uh, uh, thrown around in uh, all this construction and so on are enormous to mm -hmm. these other budgets. Uh, mm -hmm. that are it's the same if you compare sports and culture. It's, I mean, you don't even want to see those numbers. How do you spread your words about your own space? Like this, doing talks, presentations, um, word of mouth, I think. Because there, there has actually been a hyperspace in Gothenburg for four to five years. Very small space at the Viergata. Um, and um, I collaborate with them and they might, um, we, we do everything together. Uh, and their space is very really small, so I think they will move some stuff into the laboratory. And then, um, I try to connect everything, like the job I have now. I kind of map out all the resources in the city um, to, to kind of guide people the right way. Like if they need a video editing room, you can find that at this extra job I have. Um, yeah, and there's a bicycle uh, kitchen at the Gothenburg Hackerspace. And then you can send people there if they need to fix their bike. So, so I kind of try to map out, uh, map out what's already here and how we can communicate. The science park I collaborated with on uh, DIY days, uh, they, they're more, um, uh, they don't actually do so much, and it's also a very slow process when you work with uh, institutions like that. Um, but it, it's important to communicate and kind of involve them from the start and everything. Mm. So I think uh, we will have a meeting with them at the collaboratory soon. Well, do you have a, a, an age limit or something like this for the... No, never. Uh, never. I hate the age limits. That's yeah. a real big problem in Sweden. Everything is categorized like this. Mm -hmm. Here, everyone under 18 here, everyone around 30 here. And that's a big issue in this mm -hmm. country. So we have, we have like the kids' tables from IKEA to, to like pensioners. Mm -hmm. So the space has to be designed. You have to build the... Uh, like everything. But most kids run to, up to the <laughs> raspies anyway. Mm -hmm. That's kind of funny. Yeah. And politician wants to create a bigger interest for uh, te technology. In the children, you mean? Know, yeah. They want to create bigger interest for the, in the children. Uh, yeah, but it's all, yeah, the, the politicians want that. Okay. So they have to understand that, that you don't have to 
teach this in school. You have to create those spaces to, to do that. Because you don't even have to say, it. like I said before, the kids just go there and they find whatever they want. They know much more about technology than I do. So it's the teaching thing, you can just forget about it. Design a lab instead and, and you already have it. What I have seen in Copenhagen was not for children, so to say. Mm, yeah. yeah, there are, of course, there are machines that, that you need licenses and so on. Uh, so what what we say in our mission statement is that you are there on your own uh, um, regarding security. You have to be responsible for yourself, and if you bring your kids, it's your responsibility to to look into that. And um, we we haven't really built our workshop yet, but we are talking about building a bigger workshop with iron uh, forge and everything that will be in a separate building, and you will have to um, take a course like introduction course and have a license. And the, for the big machines, there will be like an 18-year-old thing. But we'll, we'll, we still have open days where you can get a gadget tour and so on. Yeah. Um, just speaking of networking and uh, mm -hmm. trying to map out the city, um, yeah. just a question or suggestion. Um, have you heard of Fractal Fabriken? Yeah, okay. Ola is a friend of mine. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. great. So there's perhaps time for one more question, if there are any questions. If not, let's uh, thank the people.